In this recording, I'm going to go over some of the concepts for macros. In this unit, we're covering macros and how to record them, but what are they? Macros are stored steps, things that you do in Microsoft Word, for that matter, Excel, Access, PowerPoint, all have macros as well. Uh, they're not exactly the same, but some of the techniques you learn here will work there. But anyways, macros are ways for you to record steps that you do over and over and over again. When you record them behind the scenes, Microsoft Word or Access or whatever you're using creates a little mini program. And then when you execute the macro, it runs that little program which repeats the steps that you recorded. And if you have some advanced skills, and that's beyond the scope of this course, but if you have some advanced skills, you can actually write the programs yourself to do some very, very powerful things. Uh, let me give you an example. I have a bunch of evaluation sheets. You're probably pretty comfortable with them by now. So I'm going to open up the tabs review sheet here and show you one of my more powerful macros. When I'm grading, you've seen this. If you get something wrong, what I like to do is replace this empty checkbox with a checkbox that's got a check mark in it, and I make it red so that it stands out. I like to change the points to red. And then I like to occasionally add comments out here in red text. And I had to do that every time one student did one thing wrong, it would make me crazy. So what I've done is recorded a macro and saved it, and I called it wrong, give macros names. And you can also assign macros to keyboard shortcuts, and I've assigned it to Control W. So whenever a student gets something wrong, I press Control W. And it automatically changes this box to a checked filled box. It makes it red, makes this text red. And notice that my cursor is blinking at the end of the line. And any text I type here shows up red. So that makes grading a lot simpler for me. So then you come down here and you also got this wrong and I can put a message here and it makes it a lot easier for me to use these evaluation sheets to grade your assignments. So that's one. In some of my other, let me mark one more wrong here. In some of my other classes, I don't use the check marks. I use, they're fill in the blank forms and those kinds of things. And occasionally they make mistakes and I have to mark them wrong in a different way. And the way I like to do that is to use a pink box. It's a text box with a pink background with a minus one half in it. I also have an alt Q that gives me one for quarter points if I really want it. That one doesn't seem to be working right now. Maybe it's a special one. Nope, that one's not working on this machine, but there's the one half, and that's just a text box. But again, when they get stuff wrong, I don't want to have to enter to create a text box, make it just the right size. Even copying this to the clipboard and pasting it doesn't work very well because they don't align with what I'm using, with what's wrong. If I put my cursor in this line, the text box, the Alt-H text box, is supposed to show up right next to that line, and it does. That was part of the macro, right? And so... That's, again, saving me a bunch of time. I'm going to delete my text boxes here by clicking on them, maybe. Nope, the text box doesn't want to go away. Maybe it's already gone, I just can't tell. Yep. Okay, so those are gone. Another very powerful macro that I've created, I also got tired of scrolling through here and trying to figure out how many points you got wrong. Some of my programming assignments, the evaluation sheets are four pages long. And when I go through and add up how many points the student has lost, I will often make a mistake. So I've written a macro now that will actually do that for me, and it didn't work in the last recording. Let's see if it works here. Okay, I can't show you that one here because unfortunately my recording software uses Alt-P, which is my shortcut key, for calculating the points. Uh, but wait, yes I can. I can show you the macro by launching it manually. My shortcut key, Alt-P, is being used by my recording software to pause the recording. And so it's, if there's a little jerky there and that's because I've been pausing on and off. But I can show you the macro by running it manually. To run macros, you need to open your developer tab. So if you don't have that developer tab, I'll show it to you here. Actually, I'm going to show it to you in the next recording, so that'll be fine. I'm going to go to macros, and here's a list of all the macros that I have in my normal template. I'm looking in normal. And here's my blue OK, if things are OK. Here's my half box that I showed you with the pink box. I have macros for green text. And I also have one that is very complex that determines the score. It actually walks through the entire document and adds up how many points you've lost. So it's looking for ones or halves that are red and adds them up. 
figures out how many points were available, figures how many of the update points, does all that automatically. All right, so that's a very, very powerful macro. That one took a little time for me to write, and it did take my programming skills to make it work. So that's an example. Let me show you another example that might be a little closer to home. You've been reading my instructor's notes as well. And so here's the Unit 5 instructor's notes. And those should look pretty common. These are all built around tables, by the way, and these are all based on a template so that the headers are already there, the titles are already there, all of this formatting is already done. But one of the things I often want to do when I'm creating these notes is I might want to add a new row here. And in Excel, they've got a new button where, and actually it's Word, you get a new button where you can click on that. But before that button came along, I created a macro where if I press Control plus on the numeric keypad, it adds a new row for me. So even with the new mac, even with the new little plus sign here, it's not a bad macro to have because I'm so used to it. I press Control plus, adds a new row in between these rows in my table, and I can update all that. So those are examples of macros. Uh, a lot of macros, not the ones I've demonstrated to you, well, I take that back. A lot of macros have today been replaced by quick parts. So, for instance, my little one-half box, I could easily make that a quick part. And you can go back to, I believe it was Unit 3, where we talked about quick parts and learn how to do those. I could save that little one-half box as a quick part. But even inserting a quick part, it wouldn't necessarily appear in the right place in the document where I want it to appear right next to that line that's blank. But I had some examples in my notes where I had graphics that I was rotating and sizing and doing those were done with macros. Today it's not done that way. You can't even use, I discovered, graphics, symbols, uh, shapes. You can't even use those in macros anymore. The macro recorder ignores them. So that's our overview of macros. Many macros have been replaced by quick parts today, but there's still, as I've demonstrated here, a lot of use for macros. There are books that are written on macros to do all kinds of very fancy things.